tremendous. As Andrew St. Pierre White says, does it give you the fizz? Yep. In case you're watching, Andrew, this definitely gives me the fizz. Yep. Definitely gives me the fizz. You can probably hear the rain hitting the patio roof out there. Hopefully that's not coming through the audio too loud and drowning me out. Um, it's only a little bit different today. I'm just doing a video from here at home. I haven't been able to get out for the last, oh, maybe three weeks now. Just with work and other stuff going on, being busy. Um, so I haven't, I haven't had a video. Um, so this seemed like a perfect time to film this particular video that's sort of been on my mind for a while now and as you probably could tell by a title talking about solo camping uh, i'm not i'm not doing this video to try and come off like i'm a, a solo guru or a solo superstar uh, the premise of this video is sort of just to i suppose talk about um my particular way of solo camping how I got into it, um, what helped me to start doing it, uh, so, sort of my journey with solo camping because um, it's getting very big. It's a, it's a really big thing now and it was already quite a thing before I started to really enjoy my solo camping. I guess now with <clears throat> um, YouTube and Instagram and these platforms it's given it, uh, given it a a place to live and be called something, have a have a embodiment almost, and it's turned into a real big thing. You know, even me, my videos, solo solo camping, solo adventure, solo travel. You know, I've done plenty of my own videos with that title. What's made me <clears throat> consider doing this video is the you see a lot of attention around solo camping. You see. You see people ask a lot of questions in comment sections or on Q&As on Instagram stories. A lot of comments on um, YouTube videos. Be it, how did you get into solo camping? What do you recommend for someone who's never been solo camping? You know, those kinds of questions. Um, so I thought bugger it. <clears throat> I'm going to put my, my two cents in for what it's worth, I suppose, and um, try and answer some of those myself because it's it, it can be very daunting and can be a very weird experience especially if you've never done it and you only consider yourself camping with mates or with your family so i've got a little list here I've, i didn't want to miss anything so i've i've written down a, a bit of a, a bit of a hit list just just something to keep me because i get very sidetracked like i'm doing right now i get very um I'll start talking about something and I'll go to another point and another point. So I wanted to try and stay a little bit more focused. We'll see how that actually goes. Why I love solo camping, I've gotten a, I've gotten a, um, a point written down under that. Freedom. Freedom for me, and I'm talking in the sense of spontaneously going, I feel like camping tonight, or I feel like camping tomorrow night. And I can pack the car and I can go. It's so easy. And you don't have to consider mates. Say your missus is at work or she's got something on. Or your mates are busy. Whatever the case may be. You're able to just go, right, I've got some time today, tomorrow. Say you've got a couple of days off work even, you know. you beauty. I'm going to go camping. To be able to just jump in the car, head wherever you want, on your own without having to worry about anyone else, what they might be doing, trying to organise the boys, trying to get the missus keen. <laughs> um, whatever the case may be, you, you just have that freedom. That for me is probably one of the, it's not the only reason, it's not the biggest reason, but it is a very, it is a very big contributing factor for me for why I love solo camping because when you are relying on going out with mates and that, uh, it can be very, can be very hard, and it can be a bit of a mood kill. Um, if you've got that freedom, the ability to go out on a weeknight, and you can do it solo, you can handle doing that. 
Oh my goodness, honestly it is. It, it, it's a completely different feel. It's a completely different camp. Um, wheat, wheat camping is almost all I do now. I've got really not much time for weekend camping. Just because it's always so busy and your favourite spots are likely taken with you know big groups and whatnot. Um, but yeah, that's a that's a whole different topic together. So I'll try and stay on track. Um, <clears throat> my other point here I've got is you take more from your time out in the bush. If you want to tune in and listen to the bush, um, it's extremely hard to do that when you're around mates, when you're around a big group. Everyone's chatting away. The music's usually going. Uh, the last thing you're going to hear is anything going on out in the bush. So for me, that's that's one of the biggest takeaways for me is when I'm when I'm out there, I'm really hearing everything going on in my environment and in the surrounds that I'm in. I'm really soaking up every element of nature and every every noise, every smell, everything that's going on around me in my environment. And that for me, after camping with mates and then starting to go out on my own, that for me was the biggest ticket item. It was just like, wow, it was just, it was just punched in the face with how much was going on out there <clears throat> and then once you start doing it more and more um you, you kind of get the routine of the bush if that sort of makes sense the birds the birds at a particular time they always kick off with their bird song um the smell in the morning with first light so you start to get you start to um uh recognize the routine of the bush if that sort of makes sense if I'm articulating that right which is a beautiful thing it is absolutely awesome we all love to go out blow some steam off you know I just did not that long ago just my last camp was out with some boys and I caught up with Alex from Intense and uh, Braden and Todd <coughs> um, and uh, and that's great um, but yeah you when you when you can be out there on your own you can really capture everything that's going on that for me is camping that's the camping I want to do, uh, hence why I go solo. I've got things, I've got written down here things to consider. Um, and then I'll get into another point of um, things for, things to help, or things that help first time solo campers. So I'll get into things to consider first. I think what uh, what's easy to perhaps overlook is are you going to be equipped to handle something go wrong if something does happen to go wrong are you going to be in a position to be able to handle that take care of yourself um, let's say for example you're out on a track uh, you've got big tires in your car you've got 35 say uh, you have a blowout you need to change the tire are you on your own going to be able to handle the jack are you going to be able to handle getting the car up? Are you going to handle manoeuvring the wheel on your own? Um, it's a classic example. Are you, are, you, are you going to be able to do that without relying on anyone else being there? You're the one that's going to have to do that. Um, if you get sick, if you, you know, if you feel crook, it's happened to me before, it's happened a couple of times. I've gotten crook out camping um, and I've had to look after myself, get myself well um, and and strong enough to be able to come home. And if you feel like you're getting crook, are you going to be able to pack everything up quick and bail and, and come home before you get too sick? Just things like that to consider. Um, <clears throat> things like awnings, you know, like not long ago when I was out in the wheat belt, that freak front came through on that uh, salt lake that I was on. Um, and I was trying to pack an awning up on my own in 60k winds. I've already packed up, I nearly lost the awning. Trying to pack that up on my own, it just turned into a wind sail once I unstrapped it. So that was a mission. Uh, yeah, this, this is what happens, this is reality. It was it was tough, but thankfully I've done the awning in and out on my own so many times that I was able to get that done and I didn't have the thing, because it, quite, it could have quite easily have blown off the car and I'd have no awning. 
um, but thankfully I knew how to do that <clears throat> could handle it in that wind and I could get it back on the car on my own don't get yourself into position where you're out of your depth if something goes wrong because you are going to be on your own and it's it's definitely something to consider this is probably the the main reason that I wanted to do this video and it's what I've found helped me as a first time solo camper because you know there's not a, there's not many points here there's only a few here but that's all you need they're just little handy tips or tricks to make you feel comfortable going bush on your own yeah if I could pass on anything that I've picked up then awesome so here we go um, for first time solo campers the first one I've written down is camp with reception absolutely no shame in doing that I did that many times sometimes I still even do um, sometimes mentally this is this is me talking I don't know if anyone feels a bit the same as well I know there's a lot of guys that will completely object to this may even scoff at it and that's fine I understand but I would also probably um, expect that you are extremely seasoned and comfortable solo campers so you're you've built this up um, so don't be too judgmental about what I'm about to say but there is absolutely no shame in camping with reception because <clears throat> if you are out there you're on your own uh, there is a certain amount of uh, a comfort factor I suppose that I'm sure a lot of people and I have myself would find um, in being able to message the missus or being able to message a mate or um, something like that even something as simple as just having access to your Spotify so you can play some music which is actually a perfect segue into the next one um, I've written down play some music because um, if it does get a bit much you know it can be so silent out in the bush at night it can be deafening so if you've got just a, a little Bluetooth speaker or some headphones if it starts to get a bit too much um, <clears throat> it's almost like a sensory overload with because it's so quiet and that's how that's how I felt sometimes sometimes I even still do not so much anymore um, like with reception and I've, I've become a lot more comfortable with being um, out there more remote without reception um, mentally a lot more mentally prepared for that because I've become used to it um, I'm a big fan of putting on some bush poetry or a bit of Slim Dusty, you know, something like that, John Williamson, or um, why not, you know, you're in the bush, why not listen to something that you want to enjoy, part of the experience. Uh, another point that I've got here, <coughs> now this one is the most important, I think, for me, <coughs> take good food and have a big cook up. Food out camping, especially when you're on your own, you have you have that time to really focus on your food and cooking. Get something really. What's something that you enjoy? What's something that you love? What's something that you really like cooking? If you haven't really cooked on fire much, use the opportunity to get a big fire going, get some coals, play around with a camp oven, or cook some steak on the fire or something like that. You know, like get get really in the zone and immerse yourself in cooking because you will thoroughly enjoy it you have that time there to do it uh, no one's bugging you you're not you know you can eat when you're ready to eat because you don't have to feed anyone else um and ju just tuck into some really good food take out some of your favorite for me you know i love a, i love a steak i love me veggies um i love me bacon and egg burgers that's one of my most exciting things to do when I'm out camping is to throw a bacon and egg burger down my down my big fat gob first thing in the morning after a coffee, you know, like really get stuck into having some really nice tucker when you're out camping because you've got the time. You can focus on it and um, eating eating really good food out camping is I, I, I feel a bit sad when people don't really take nice food. You know, you don't have to every time, there's sometimes when I'll just have a cup of soup or something but for the most part, that's when I get really excited to to eat my favourite camp meals. Because a lot of the time when I'm when I'm camping um, and the, the meals I eat out camping, I don't eat them through the week at home or 
at home. You know what I mean? I I, I saved those yummy meals for camping. <laughs> I've got one more point here. This is when people ask how. Well, they ask me how. You know, what's some tips for solo camping? The first thing I usually say is camp in a populated campsite. Camp in a booked campsite. You don't need to go being a macho man, uh, going and try and find the most remote spot you can find. You don't need to go and do the Holland Track or camp way out in the middle of nowhere in the wheat belt or the gold fields or, I don't know, head off to a to an isolated dam somewhere or something like that. There is definitely a comfort that can be found. And this, I say this obviously for first time solo campers or you can do this for a number of times until you get used to it. Or even now I consider myself a very seasoned solo camper and I still revert back to this principle or point even now, which some of you may be surprised. There's some beautiful spots around the place where you can go, you can have a nice little nook, a nice little spot, a little corner, um, and you know there's going to be people around. You know that you're not completely isolated on your own, uh, but you you are there in your own little corner or your own little nook. You have the place to yourself. Uh, you're still solo camping. You're doing it on your own, and you're gonna feel a lot better for it. Trust me. I I would rather anyone do that than than wig out almost and not go at all. Absolutely. I don't, and if there's one thing that I can get across in this video, it's that. You should feel no shame. You should feel no shame with, and I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll even say, I'll even say you should feel no shame whether you're solo camping for the first time or you're a seasoned solo camper, <clears throat> or you're a camper in general going out with mates or your family. There should be no shame in wanting to go somewhere with reception, um, and where there's other people around. If it means that you can at least get out there. If it's the difference between you not going at all, I 100% advocate for anyone going um, and being somewhere that they're going to feel comfortable with and at least you're out, at least you're still in the bush. Obviously it's not for everyone, There's, there's, and, and I get the same as well on the flip side, I need to be away from people, I need to go isolated, I need to go really far, be away from as many folk as I possibly can. Um, but it's not every time. Sometimes, sometimes you want to feel a bit of um, familiarity, perhaps, or feel comfortable. I suppose that's all I've got to say, really, about solo camping. I hope you might have got something out of it because it is, <clears throat> it is such a, a joyous thing. Like I, I just can't recommend it enough. I really can't. It's something that everyone has to experience to whatever degree since I've started solo camping. My my experience and my my pleasure, what I get from camping now out in the bush is just it's a, it's on a whole nother level. It's on a whole nother appreciation. And I hope that that translates through my videos as well because I feel like I feel like I really do my best work um, when I'm on my own. And I can really focus on translating that through the camera and through to the videos. And that's where my passion really lies. That's what gives me the fizz. As Andrew St. Pierre White says, what gives you the fizz? Does it give you the fizz? Solar camping gives me the fizz. A little FYI, Kelly and I, speaking of Kelly, we're actually, we are actually going out uh, into this week. Um, we're, heading, we're heading to a, a, a lovely spot. I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, we're heading off towards the end of the week, this week. Uh, I can't wait. Kelly and I haven't been camping together since uh, March down at Parry Beach. So it's been a long time and I'm really excited. So you'll see that coming soon. Uh, I can't wait. So, yes, until then, I look forward to that one. Look forward to seeing you all. Thanks again for watching this one and I'll, I'll definitely see you soon. All right, stay safe out there. All right.